Hey everybody, the YouTube analytics are in and they say, I lose 15% of you in the first 20 seconds because I don't do something weird or keep your interest. So I'm trying to be more engaging right off the top. Let me show you something kind of cool. It uses uh, four playing cards. One, two, three, four playing cards. They're all queens. A little shake like this and the first queen disappears. That was pretty interesting. I can make another one disappear. Watch, a little shake like that. And the next one's gone. Yeah. Can I do it again? Of course I can. I'm a magician. Look, there's another one gone. I know what you're thinking. Thinking Sean, did all four of them disappear? Nah, that would be too easy. Instead, I've got them all hanging out together. Check it out. Yeah, that's right. It's my job. Speaking of my job, stick around. I'll show you more. Hey guys, play the intro. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Sean Farquhar and you're watching <clears throat> Magic, ah, card tricks. All right, uh, we're gonna do this with a, a new deck of cards. Actually, this is an old deck of cards. It's new, but it's old. Now, these are fabricated in the European Union. See, it says EU on there. And these are old. They have um, Paquette. Uh, it's, in, it's in French and English. Uh, so very Canadian. Um, and, and look at this, you can tell it's old. Look at the size of the tab on the end of the box. Uh, these are cool, uh, classic, uh, deep blue rider backs. Uh, this is back in the days uh, when I first started studying with cards. Uh, I used to watch Martin A. Nash. And Martin A. Nash used to say, it's easy to find the cards. Uh, they have different weights. The Ace of Spades has the most ink, uh, so it's very heavy. Uh, and to find an Ace of Spades, uh, you would just uh, cut. Maybe I'll do it like this. Oh, with my left hand is easier. Uh, yeah, Ace of Spades. Uh, it's because the left hand picks up black cards. I know that sounds weird, but the left hand just picks up black cards. The right hand only picks up like red cards. Yeah, uh, I know that sounds bizarre, but that's what it does. Uh, that's how I trade. So if I wanted to find like a, a card like this, that would be the Ace of Clubs. That's because I did it with my left hand. If I wanted to find the Ace of Hearts, I would reach like that. That would be the Ace of Hearts. That's very good. If I wanted another red one, uh, then maybe I should shuffle them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because right now I just say, you know, I, I find black cards, I find black cards, I find red cards. I find red cards, uh, that's because, you know, I'm, I'm cutting them like that. But if I shuffle the cards, uh, then finding that uh, last one, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the Ace of Diamonds. Uh, uh, I should let you see. I'll make sure they're really shuffled. You can see they really are shuffled. And the Ace of Diamonds, I just want you to see where it is. I'll go through slowly. I'm looking with you guys because I can see a monitor, just so you know. Uh, did you see the Ace of Diamonds? Oh, there it is there. All right, so it's pretty close to the end. I'll cut it more towards the middle so that uh, you know it's somewhere in the center. Now, I don't grab it with my left hand. My left hand, that's gonna be a black card. That's just what happens. But with my right hand, when I reach down, that should pick it right up at the Ace of Diamonds. Yeah, it's my job. It's just what I do. I play with a deck of cards. It's, uh, I, I have a lot of spare time. I'll talk more about Martin A. Nash in the next one. Uh, Marty was a really cool magician and Canadian too. Keep well, keep busy. And most of all, stay safe. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. So uh, let me tell you a story about Martin A. Nash, the charming cheat. I was 16 years old when I met him at the Hillside Mall in Victoria, British Columbia. He was doing magic shows, five, six of them a day, sitting behind a table with a giant mirror above so the audience could uh, see the work on the table. It was long before there were cameras and television screens. Martin was a master of his craft, a phenomenal card technician, uh, one of the best card mechanics I think that ever lived. And uh, he befriended me and shared a lot of his ideas with me. And I try to keep them alive. Uh, one of them was to, well, here, let's do it like this. Uh, I need a couple of cards. We'll use the Kings as our demonstration. Martin would talk about uh, uh, doing uh, cheating, like in a game of poker. And when you're gonna cheat in poker, you deal cards from the bottom of the deck. So we're gonna use these four Kings and place them on the bottom of the deck. In a moment, uh, we're gonna deal hands to five people, four suckers, and I mean, four volunteers and me. And what's gonna happen is the bottom card is gonna be dealt to me so that I end up with these four kings uh, that are hidden on the bottom. Now, normally the cards would be held like this. 
and of course the camera or the people would be above uh, so you don't really see but from here you might actually see this card is curling around uh, so I'm doing this so you can see exactly how it works I place the cards down one two three four and on the fifth one I push this card over uh, like it's to be cover like it's the one I'm going to grab but really these fingers are going to grab the one underneath and place it down I'll do that again so it's just like this one two three four and on this one go across once again the get ready is is kind of suspicious and this is not how it would actually be done by a gambler uh, when a gambler did it instead of drawing this card of course they're drawing the bottom one when a gambler really does it there is no get ready cards are just like this they begin placing them down and when it gets to this card this card goes over but this finger pushes out so it actually pulls the card out on each one of them around like this and then just even for fun a push down like that now, of course they would end up with the four kings Ooh, and the queen of spades high it's it's a good hand of course I don't do a bottom deal as you can tell because a bottom deal uh, it's easy to catch uh, a center deal much harder to catch because see in a real game of poker they'd ask you to burn the bottom card experts will tell you if you burn this ten of spades on the bottom deck turning it over there's no way to get to that eight of diamonds that's what they say there's no way to get to this eight of diamonds that's what experts will tell you okay there is but but that's what they'll tell you uh, instead I'm going to draw the cards from the center of the deck because then there's nothing on the bottom to worry about I have to pull them from the center if you look at my hand now my finger isn't uh, suspiciously on the corner there are no cards curled uh, but you'll also notice I'm missing a finger I'm missing my little baby finger why it counted down into the deck to the king of clubs about 24 cards yeah right there so I'm gonna now take and draw cards off like this and as I do this will be the cover of shade but as I draw these cards off my little finger is actually gonna pivot like that it's gonna draw the card out of the center of the deck yeah so uh, watch closely I can do this at only one speed uh, what my uh, grandfather uh, used to refer to as not gonna shoot me today speed uh, five here we go And that's it what do you figure the chances are I collected up the Kings would you bet me no you shouldn't I went for the aces instead <laughs>